a warm welcome and very good evening to all the students who have joined on today's series of virtual webinar which is conducted to empower student uh, which is conducted to build the confidence of student from all the angles if experiences of the experts could be shared the learning is faster why to you know learn from our own experiences learn the experiences from others why to learn by making own mistakes learn from others mistakes so within this context we have a very interesting topic to discuss and learn in this virtual webinar series and today we have with us omkar bar who has recently qualified gate exam and that to um, achieving a very good rank in the gate exam gate exam is considered as one of the toughest exam i was in conversation with one of the faculty from foreign university and then uh, that faculty was you know telling that this gate qualified uh, gate qualification exam is so very important and he got a chance to look at the syllabus and the paper some of the you know past few years paper and that foreign faculty himself complimented and said that gate exam is one of the really tough exam and yes it is but for our student if one prepares follows the strategies follows the tips and studies and work hard towards it it is not difficult at all so omkar is going to share all those tips strategies and tricks to crack so that our you know preparation becomes little bit easier omkar is our final year student one of the very good student who is pursuing btech food engineering and technology i hope in another few days um, you will be like officially a graduate because we have that farewell uh, session coming soon and omkar has a dream to pursue his higher studies he would like to go for a uh, masters probably in, from one of the most reputed institutes in the country and apart from that he is passionate about sports indian classical music and other things and he believes that hard work consistency and achieving perfection in little smaller things that one does uh, one does can bring success very easily and yes omkar i have seen you as a faculty while teaching you while assessing you while evaluating you how good you are maintaining the quality be it presentation be it writing answer sheets or be it you know doing a small simple thing of assignment submission of assignment achieving that perfection and quality is what is your quality so thank you so much for accepting the invitation and you are ready to share with us your tips strategies and tricks to qualify the gate exam thank you so much and over to you at the screens visible and i hope i am audible as well yes if you can make it in the full screen yes it is full screen mode thank you so much okay so good evening everyone and first of all thank you very much shalmi ma'am for that elaborate introduction and also this platform for where i can express my approach my my strategies used to crack gate that definitely should help everyone watching this so yes i am a final year btech food engineering and technology student from icd mumbai so let's start with it so looking at what exactly are we going to touch upon today many a times it is a situation it was with me that when i decided to attempt gate which i had a fair idea as an entrance for getting into mtech courses in india but not that much of an information on what exactly is gate what competition i am dealing with whether i am eligible or not so to start with i'll begin with the introduction then some of the section combinations that you have in your gate paper especially in food science then we'll look at the syllabus and uh, 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 an approach that i suggest that helps cover the entire syllabus some important topics in food science to touch upon then we'll move on to planning out tests your mock tests how to attempt those when to attempt those 
and some of the opportunities once you have now qualified Git, and that will actually build up a motivate motivation for everyone watching this as to achieve that once you have gone through the entire process of gate preparation. Then some quick suggestions from my side that I hope helps everyone during the preparation and also during the exam. Okay, so let's start right away. Gate, which is the Graduate Aptitude Test in Engineering, is a national level examination conducted by IISC Bangalore, along with the seven IITs, Bombay, Delhi, Guwahati, Kanpur, Kharagpur, Madras, and Roorkee. Now there are 27 papers in total for uh, in GATE, among which there are two papers that we as food scientists or food science aspirants would apply for. Now a fact that actually creates the perception of GATE being uh, one of the toughest exams is that the percent aspirants qualifying this exam is quite low. It is on an average over the past five to six years, it is 15 to 18% of the aspirants who have appeared have qualified the exam. Now, in my opinion, the qualification or the reason for this percentage, I feel is not right in the difficulty level of the exam, but the willingness for putting in the preparation efforts that go into gate. I think the lack of willingness or the lack of efforts that go into the preparation is what results into this number. If the preparation done right, if done with the full will, I don't think this number, uh, this qualification is going to be a great problem. So now moving on to our topic of interest, that is the food science and technology. So as I said, out of the 27 papers available, the food science aspirants have two options. Either they can go for engineering sciences, which is with the paper code XC, or the life sciences, which is the paper code Excel. Right? Now, uh, an interesting thing happened during GATE 2021 is the spike in the number of applicants in XC. So, around in by until last year, it was around 4,700, 4,800 uh, people applying for uh, GATE XC. Well, this year it was around 22,219 applicants. Now, uh, a question that is probable to rise is that whether the competition for uh, the gate exam in foods has rise this much in a one year span? I don't think so. Now, there are two factors to consider. In gate XE, I'll elaborate on this further, but just to count, uh, for explaining this point here, there are multiple sections, around six sections available in gate XE, out of which you choose two. One is your food technology, and one is your, of your choice. It may, be, it may be thermodynamics, you have fluid mechanics, right? So you have options there that actually suit even mechanical engineering aspirants. So as a second paper, mechanical engineering students give ME, which is their paper code, mechanical engineering, and XE. So IITs actually accept mechanical engineering, MTech in mechanical engineering through gate XE as well. So the awareness has actually uh, risen uh, in the past uh, year or two. So that is one of the reasons that has increased the applicants going in for XE. Another reason is the allowance of third year rights also to attempt gate. Now that is an excellent move as people are getting an opportunity to attempt gate multiple times while they are doing their graduation. Right? So that is, I feel, another factor that has contributed to the increase in number of applicants. Now, just broadly looking at the eligibility for getting into or applying for gate, first important factor, there is no age limit. So this is a positive or a negative as, as one sees it. So a positive in the sense you have multiple attempts, you have multiple times of preparation. The pressure of qualifying in two or three attempts is, is eliminated here, right? While on the negative side, if, you, if one has to see, it can be seen as an, as an increase in competition. The variation is, the, in the competition is large. So even uh, an industry, industrial person with uh, around, let's say, 
five, 10 years of experience is attempting gate in order to maybe improve on the qualification going into MTech, going into PhD. While a fourth year fresher from a fresh graduate will also be applying for the same exam. So yes, there will be an increase in competition, but you have multiple attempts with you. So the pressure should be less is what I suppose. Then yes, basic, you have to have a BE, BTEC or B Farm graduation going on in engineering or technology. Even MBBS, the four and a half year program is valid or they are eligible for appearing for GATE because of streams like biomedical engineering that you can go into for pursuing your MTEC. Right? And the last one actually is not a, a theoretical eligibility criteria as such, but I think is what one needs to consider even while going into preparation is the aggregate marks of the CGP of your qualifying degree. Because now let's say you have qualified it, you want to pursue your MTech. Many of the MTech colleges actually consider your CGPA a, a set benchmark that needs uh, that you need to have in order to apply. So even if you have qualified kid, a certain CGP of let's say 6.5, 7, 7.5 is required and that varies with different colleges. Right? So that I think if any first year right or second year right is, is uh, watching this, maybe he or she can take this into consideration of building up on the CGPA and not letting that part down. So now let's move on to food science and technology aspect in detail. So as I said, you have two paper options, XE and Excel. Basically for both, you have the general aptitude, the first section common and compulsory. Okay, so in total of 100 marks, general aptitude carries 15. Then moving on to XE, you have engineering mathematics as a compulsory subject. While in Excel, you have chemistry as a compulsory subject with 15 and 25 marks respectively. Okay, so if you apply for uh, XE, you are down with first general aptitude, then mathematics as compulsory sections. If you are into Excel, you have general aptitude and chemistry as the compulsory sections. Now next, for the remaining two sections, you have option. In XE, you have option out of six. In Excel, you have option out of five. Okay, now for us as food science, uh, food science aspirants, if we want to get into MTech after GATE, appearing for the food technology section is compulsory. So it rather creates only one subject or one section as a choice for us, right? So among fluid, fluid mechanics, material science, solid mechanics, thermodynamics, or polymer science, one can choose any of this section along with food technology to make it 70 marks and in total 100. Right. Same thing is for Excel. Once you have chosen food technology, you have one option out of biochemistry, botany, microbiology, zoology. Right. Again, making up to 100. So this is what the general, general classification of sections is there. You have four primary sections. First two are the compulsory and the remaining two are the options that you choose out of the, out of the specified year. Right. So now, as I said, the options, the combinations, any combination is possible, but obviously it is, it is recommended for you to uh, choose one combination and then study for it. It is not a case that you will decide thermodynamics or fluid mechanics when at the time of appearing your exam, gate exam, right? Obviously that's not going to be the situation. So in choosing your combinations, you can have multiple combinations possible. Here are the com common combinations that I've put forth. So food technology, you can choose thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, material science. If you're going into Excel, along with food technology, you can go for microbiology, biochemistry, right? Now, what I had chosen was food technology and thermodynamics, since thermodynamics is what I felt comfortable with, is what I had a brief idea about and then to build upon. So now let's move on to what exactly is there in each section. So in general aptitude, you have these following topics among which what I feel the reasoning and data interpretation is important since you can have mixed concepts there. 
So you can have profit loss, you can have percentage included in your data interpretation or the graph representation problems, right? Another important topic is the time and work aspect or the problems. Then you have even probability in the general aptitude section. And the new section or the topic that is introduced is the verbal ability, the grammar part, okay? So these are the two references that I have used. There are multiple references online. But this is what I refer to, and I feel this is good enough, along with understanding of the concepts uh, using online sources. Now for the next is, which is the engineering mathematics. Again, these are the uh, chapters laid down in the syllabus. And now to be honest, we as food, uh, food engineering or food science aspirants who have engineering mathematics around SEM 1, SEM 2. So it becomes crucial for us to revisit those topics, to brush upon the concepts, to solve a number of problems in order to get the mathematics or the engineering mathematics problem from gate. Okay, so this is what I feel where the level stands. You need a bit of a revision, quite a good amount of revision for attempting the engineering mathematics from XE. So again, these are the these are the topics that I feel have been stressed upon over the years and could definitely score. Uh, you could definitely score well if you actually build strong areas in these topics. So it is up to you to identify your strong topics along with what has actually appeared over the past few years. Right? So that should be in sync. Again, these are the two references, BS Gravel and again, casing gate. These are the two references that I use for solving problems as well as for clearing out concepts. Now for thermodynamics, again, this is what I feel is the most scoring part that you can have in your gate, is what I had in my gate. So if you are actually clear with those concepts, those laws, and most importantly, thermodynamic cycles. I think thermodynamics is a beautiful section for scoring marks. You can actually go up to 30 to 32 marks out of 35 in your thermodynamics section, and that definitely is going to boost your AIR. Right, so again, these are the two references I have used, PK Nag, Engineering Thermodynamics, RK Rajput, Engineering Thermodynamics. Right, now coming on to food technology. The portion of the syllabus is distributed in four majority chapters, which are food chemistry and nutrition, food microbiology, food products technology, and food engineering. Okay, so in this strata, you have different topics. You have different processes involved that you need to study. The food engineering part deals with the calculations or the numericals that you get in your exam, right? Now, what I feel is that for your conventional branches like electrical or mechanical, civil, computer science, there are a number of online platforms, a number of online sources that actually get onto teaching of those stuffs online, right? But for food science, I think you can rarely find anything online that actually takes you through the entire gate preparation. So it becomes vital for us to put in those efforts for preparing on the different concepts, for making notes out of the different concepts, solving a number of numerical problems. Okay. So for that, let's say this book of Mohammed Irfan Ahmad Ansari. This is an excellent book for solving the engineering problems from past year, as well as they have uh, different uh, extra problems for clearing out concepts. Right. However, understanding of the concepts in food engineering, what I felt was excellent, uh, excellently, you know, expressed through Toledo. Right. So that that actually created a good understanding of the different uh, aspects in food engineering. For food products technology, you can go for food facts and principles by Shakuntala Mani. And of course, for food chemistry, the very well known Fenema. Obviously, there are a number of different sources. Again, this is the same thing. You have a different a variety of different sources or references that you can refer to. But what actually to 
take from that, what actually to study from it, to what extent to study from it, is what is critical to understand while preparing for this exam. Right? The, the syllabus is humongous. You cannot go into depth for each topic, but you need to identify to what topics I need to stress upon, to what extent should I stress upon. Okay. Yes, past papers are going to be a, a, a vital source in terms of gaining that understanding of on what depth a certain topic has been asked for. Now, yes, these are the three key areas that I feel that one can stress upon while studying for food technology section of the gate paper. The basic nutrient chemistry, the biochemical changes involved, let's say for the meat uh, tenderization, you have the protein changes, myoglobin changes for, let's say, the enzymatic, non-enzymatic reactions of sugars. Okay, so I'm just citing a few examples of it. Then your food microbiology in your XC actually stresses upon the microbes responsible for spoilage and the enzyme kinetics. So these, I feel, are the two very important topics from food microbiology, which I feel is sufficient for from that part. Then you have various product processes, the, the manufacturing process, the processing of the, uh, of the raw material, let's say oil. In oil processing, you have different various stages. So just to, just to give an example on what depth you should go for, in oil processing, you can, you can have degumming, you, you have the refining processes, right? Degumming, deodorization, then you have various processes that actually take place in oil processing that you need to understand why and what are the specifications. Okay, so understanding why is as, as important as what are the specifications for preparing just an example of preparing for food product technology. Then coming to the numerical part of it, the food engineering part of it, you have mechanical operations like sedimentation, then you have size reduction, homogenization, filtration. And yes, the numericals associated with it, the theory associated with it, the machinery associated with it. Then the last three topics that I've mentioned here are very crucial for your numerical solving, which are the mass transfer, momentum transfer, and thermal transfer, which for me, I cleared from Toledo, the concepts. And fortunately from, from ICD, our, our professors had actually put in so much efforts for each of these topics, be it be a nutrient chemistry or microbiology or the product technology. The efforts from the professors was so, so huge and the impact as well. So there are notes from classes, your notes from classes. Maybe that is going to play a crucial part in food technology as a whole. Right? So yes. Okay. Now the point that I mentioned of identifying what exactly you should study from each reference to what extent actually came in the picture of food genics for me, which is basically uh, an initiative, uh, uh, an online initiative by Institute of Chemical Technology, MTech students. So they work on guiding the students on how to cover the entire portion. So that is where the strategy of covering the por portions in quantums is came into picture. Okay, and this is what I will also suggest because yes, definitely that has very well helped me in covering the portion, attempting the paper with a good good preparation. So this this works on testing on a weekly basis. Okay, and with the portion getting cumulative week after week. So let's say on the fifth week, you have all the five weeks portion that is being you're being tested for. Okay, so. I think for me, this started by the end or mid October, which I feel was a bit late for, to start, for, a, for a comfortable preparation. So what I suggest is to start by the end of August, which would be quite comfortable for covering around 12 to 14 weeks of weekly tests, which will actually cover your entire portion for four sections. Okay, general aptitude, thermodynamics, then your mathematics, food technology, entire thing. 
Okay, now you're going through this for, I'll, I'll suggest two points here. First is your time management while your mock test. Okay, so time management is something that will not come on the final day of your gate exam. That is something that you will have to build upon. That is not only about how you are quick to attempting problems, but also arranging the sections. Now in gate, the four sections do not have a time restriction as in for, let's say the first half an hour, you have to attempt mathematics. Then you have to attempt general aptitude. Then you go for food. That's not the case. You have the freedom to go to any section at any point of time. So it becomes crucial for us to decide on what sections I will be, uh, I will be attempting first, the flow of the sections and the time I wish to allot for each. Okay. Now that needs to be decided throughout the course of the mock test. So in the first four to five mock tests, you have tried a variety of different combinations. Let's say for me, I started by, in the first attempt, I started with a general flow, general aptitude, mathematics, then thermodynamics and food technology. But by the end of fourth or fifth week, I came to a combination which I was comfortable with, which was attempting general aptitude first, then going to thermodynamics, then going to food technology, and then finally engineering mathematics. That is, that is the combination that I felt I was comfortable with. Now it is, uh, it is subjective for each one to choose one for them. Right. Now, again, a small point here would be using the online calculators while your numerical problems during the mock test as well, because that is what is going to be the scenario during your final gate exam. And the more you try to replicate that in your mock test, the better your preparation will be, right? So once you're done with this weekly test, once you have covered around the entire portion in 12 to 14 weeks, what I did was analyze the topics that actually fetched me quick marks that the concepts I was comfortable with, quick with, and also the topics that simply eat out time in your exam. So identifying that as well is very important. Okay, that will increase your chance for attempting more number of questions in your gate paper. When you know that these questions or the topics uh, and the questions for, uh, for that topic, I am not comfortable with, I'm going to keep it at the end. While the topics that I'm comfortable with, I'm going to attempt it first. Okay, so you get a sure shot score that is in your hand. While the rest, definitely you can attempt for. Now, yes, you're done with that. You have identified the topics. You have worked on those topics that you, uh, that you feel you're weak on. Start with the full length tests. About seven to 10 full length tests are good enough for getting into the gate exam. So this for me was in the month of December, January, and the exam was on 13th February. So yes, a month before I think should be good enough. And the frequency depends on your ability to take upon those exams. And I, I, I would feel that stopping the test one week, at least one week prior is important because that is going to set you in the right mode for getting into the exam. If you're getting, if you're, if you're appearing for a mock test two days prior, and let's say the uh, some section that you're comfortable with actually went bad in that test. So that is definitely going to uh, affect your, uh, your mindset going into your final exam. So to avoid that, stop those mock tests at least one week prior, build upon the topics that you are, that you're weak on, that you are comfortable with, revise those topics. Okay. Before that, also another point is start making your own notes while studying those topics. Okay. That is going to help you during this cumulative method that I've just mentioned here. Because studying from any notes that is available online, you have taken from a friend, the reading, yes, you will get some knowledge, but that is not going to have retention in your mind. Okay that will eventually fade out. But the things or the notes that you write down yourself definitely are going to be more, more clear, more evident, and for a long time in your mind. 
Okay, so you have got through gate now. Let's get into the opportunities. What you have after gate. So talking about the Indian institutes, there are a number of different Indian institutes that take admission through gate. Some of them, some of the key institutes I have mentioned here. You have IIT Kharagpur, IIT Guwahati, Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai, then NIT, Rurkela, then you have NIFTEM, right? And the two of the institutes that I feel are also crucial for considering your uh, M-Tech path, but not through gate. They have their own entrance exams, are CFTRI, Mysore, and IIFTT, Tanjabur. Now the, now the understanding that GATE is only for Indian Institute getting your M-Tech career in, your, in India itself. But there are a couple of institutes, there are a couple of foreign institutes that also give admission for your M-Tech courses or MS courses through GATE. So one of them is National University of Singapore. And the second is the Jifu University, Japan. Now this is basically a tie up between IIT Guwahati and Jifu University. So this is an international joint M-Tech program. So you have around three semesters in IIT Guwahati and the second semester, I suppose out of the four is in Jifu University, Japan. The, the selection for this is around five uh, candidates from India, five candidates from Japan. And along with GATE score, you have uh, an interview process to go through, okay? While for the rest, IIT Kharagpur, Institute of Chemical Technology, NIT, NIFTEM, they have admissions purely through your GATE score. Okay. ICT also takes admission without GATE, but you definitely have a preference in your admission process through GATE, as mentioned in their uh, admission portal as well. Right? Another important uh, uh, an ins uh, inspiration can be for getting into PSUs, since government has mandated the qualification of GATE exam for getting into PSUs. For, so these are some of the PSUs that I've mentioned here that you can get into after your uh, GATE XC from Foods. Okay, now let's move on to some quick suggestions from my side that I feel should benefit everyone who is going into the preparation for GATE. As I had mentioned before, prepare short or micro notes, maybe for the concepts that you require daily glance at. Okay, so for example, for, for me, what I did was for thermodynamic cycles. There are a number of thermodynamic cycles to be studied. There are processes, there are equations. So for that, what I used was writing down those, writing the diagrams, the graphs for those and putting it, putting it on the wall. So having a daily glance at those concepts is definitely beneficial for sinking in those concepts over a period of time. Also, uh, as I said, the cumulative approach where you have some eight to nine weeks portion along with the 10th week portion on the 10th week weekly test, right? So at that time, it is definitely not feasible on going into detail of the nine weeks portion. So at that time, definitely a short or a micro note of that topic would help, right? Secondly, writing down your goal on where or that can be in any, any which way. If you want the institute that you're targeting on or maybe the AIR or the GATE score that you're targeting on. But writing that down is very important as you start with your preparation. Okay, that creates a reference on where you currently stand and where you need to go. Okay, that definitely motivates you to put in more efforts that comforts you or maybe that puts you in the right mind frame while uh, entering the gate uh, center. Okay, now another two points uh, that I feel are important is to refer content online. Definitely you should refer content online. Though there are references, though there are theories being studied, but referring content online in terms of the concepts, small concepts, and also importantly, the revision part. Now, what I did was for the common sections like thermodynamics, mathematics, general aptitude, there are a number of online platforms that conduct revision sessions, okay? So you can attend those 
have your concepts clear time to time right even uh, before i think a month of the gate exam there were crash courses in your revision part of it so the the there were testing of the concepts there was revising of the concepts you should definitely uh, consider that as one of the sources for your revision part next is connect with your seniors or colleagues who have recently qualified gate just to get to know the experience that get that that is there in your examination center or their while preparation the mistakes maybe they have committed for me this again came through as i said food genics where the, these were the bunch that that was almost the immediate seniors they were the batch of 2019 so that was quite a first hand experience of knowing what exactly uh, is the atmosphere during gate what exactly is the time pressure that you deal with during your gate exam so how do you prepare it for for that right now right so there can be small small uh, points that you might uh, know from this okay right? so on a concluding note i would say that it is quite important to focus on the process the preparation that you go into as i said the exam is not that difficult to qualify it is your preparation is that that is going to uh, matter over prepare yourself over prepare is definitely going to keep you in a in a right mindset in a comfortable mindset while you attempt your paper the the pressure that you feel the time pressure or the exam pressure at the day or the anxiety that you feel is definitely going to uh, come down if you over prepare yourself with different topics with your time management uh, strategies yes time is a crucial factor both in your preparation and during your exam and as mike field said massive goals don't require massive action but consistent action so for me it was putting in 2 hours to 1 half hours on a daily basis along with your college or your graduation or your job work that you're doing so maybe the preparation can start around 10 11 go up to 1 2 that's fine because what you're going going to get further is what matters and that's that if that that is what uh, it demands so be it. so yes on and last not the least thank you sharini ma'am not just for this opportunity but since you being the project guide for my final year project as well your considerate nature of putting for me putting in time in the preparation along with the project work along with the college work was really commendable thank you very much for that the guidance that you gave to well. us so yes that is it from my side thank you very much wow thank you so much omkar for sharing all that you have learned throughout this uh, process i know sharing is like caring and when one shares our own experiences other definitely learn i myself you know when i was watching all your strip uh, tips and strategies i was feeling like wow my mind took me back you know many many years back and though it is 19 years you know the situation has not changed the questions are same and at the same time the answers are same only we the people are changing okay so uh, you were mentioning that when you are in gate uh, like when you are preparing or we, when you have the uh, question paper in hand and how to you know choose like there are four section and whichever you want to choose one can choose but then the kind of pressure and tension i try i am trying to correlate myself with the 19 years back dr shalini arya who was just a student do, uh, since la, that long time back i remember like how much pressure and tension you know one gets as a student and we are not so much habituated you know that exam is so important for us so you are mentioning about you know managing time and choosing those um, four different topic so based on your own experience what is your top recommended topic um, or the subject that student should choose or they should choose what they are comfortable with because in the just previous uh, uh, you know lecture uh, shraddha mentioned there are some tips and strategies when you are at the exam section while solving you know mcqs and these kind of entrance exam 
So what should be the strategy and what should be the selection based on your own experience for GATE exam? Okay. So as I said, uh, we actually end up with one option along with food technology. So I feel that thermodynamics, since it has been covered with your engineering course as well, to a, to a very good extent, to around two to three semesters, and also it appearing in your food courses as well. So that is one topic or one section that I definitely recommend that people can definitely score good amount of weightage to that section. Yes, that's right. Uh, and you also said, you know, uh, and I know uh, being with ICT um, and the students, uh, kind of students involved in, you know, um, assignment, continuous assessment, mid exam, mid practical exam, continuous examination for, you know, so many continuous examination and then final exam. So, and then classes also, even on Saturday and I've seen some of the batches are doing classes even on Sunday, even at 6 o'clock in the evening, 8 p.m. in the evening. So this semester, particularly in this lockdown, I have seen um, your batch also, you know, they were attending classes so vigorously. So what would be your recommendation on managing time when the student either is in third year or is in final year managing our own academic because that's the most important that's going to give you a degree what if you fail in one of the subject and then you know so how do you tackle how did you tackle and what is your recommendation and suggestion for our students right so firstly understanding that the extra efforts the extra efforts to put in is from our side so what i did was yes as you said the mid examinations end terms the projects the seminars actually went on until let's say 10, 30, 11 at night. But then it's your will to start the preparation, then give an at least an hour and a half daily basis. That is definitely good rather than having a five to six hour on a Sunday. Because that, that actually, uh, you know, leads to sinking out some of the concepts that you have learned the previous time. But if you are going into the preparation on a daily basis, it is definitely it definitely helps retain more content, more information in your mind. And that actually sets you in the mood of your attempting uh, a uh, competitive exam. So what I feel is even extra hours, it's definitely worth it on putting those simultaneously managing your current college or your job, uh, you know, uh, the responsibilities. And what I feel during the college preparation, it actually helped me in the gate preparation. So even in the topics of, let's say in the latest semesters of food analysis, there were three questions in the food paper in the gate 2021, which were from food analysis, the instrumentation part. So that was quite unexpected. But since I was con uh, concentrating on the college work itself, I was able to answer them. So that's what you need to create a balance of. So that's yeah. what I because the gate exam syllabus is not different from what you yeah. are studying. It's the same thing. Basic concept, basic things, if they are clear, you're going to, you know, go there. Another question, you know, um, this uh, Lena would like to ask, what is like, um, uh, like students have a habit of procrastination and they feel like laziness. And you can see in this lockdown, there are so many negative things. One gets depressed, demotivated. How did you kept yourself highly motivated, continuing studying and continuing doing things that are related to building your own career? So what is your advice and um, suggestion for our student to know, uh, avoid procrastination? Like sometimes we say, okay, today it's 9.30 and we have been doing seminar and projects for uh, graduation. Now let us sleep today and you know, I will do the rest of the things tomorrow. And then when you wake up tomorrow, there is a pile of work that is, you know, um, there for to do. So how did you manage that and what is your suggestion? I think one point that actually helped me was keeping on the passion that you have the, the hobbies or the passion that you have going on along with your preparation. So let's say, as you said, uh, at 10, 10, 30, I am feeling tired after the, the work done of the seminar projects, maybe a 10, 10, 15 minutes, or maybe a half an hour break. You take, pursue your passion, do what you want. And actually you can give up to two hours, the next two hours into your gate preparation. 
it sets you in the right mood so the point that people often give up on their passions while pursuing something on or preparing on for a competitive exam is i think where things go wrong in terms of the the in decrease in the will to put in the efforts so definitely that would decrease the procrastination point yes wow thank you so much omkar you mentioned about food genics many of our audiences uh, parents or students do not know about food genics so is this an initiative which needs to be you know to join that initiative to get the guidance and mentoring of that initiative from that initiative do we have to you know register officially do we have to pay them what is that and uh, can you elaborate more about food genics and you already mentioned that being associated with food genics help you a lot people shared a lot of things so can you elaborate on that right so firstly i got to know uh, food genics through one of my peers and you can also view it or contact them using their linkedin profile so these are actually enthusiastic mtech students who have gone through the process recently so they are actually giving you a real time analysis on what pressure or, or on what the the flow has been of the paper over the years right so that act does not actually give you the preparation they do not actually sit with you for each topic but they actually tell you on to what level this topic should be or till what depth each topic should be studied for and that is very important that is going to reduce your preparation time that will optimize your preparation time and definitely help you in the exam so you have a 12 to 14 week uh, uh, session or a uh, what you say a uh, batch so on a on a monthly basis where around four three to four weekly tests happen so yeah so you have a monthly uh, payment for only the tests okay and so which i think currently yeah. it and uh, which one must be very minimal and very which minimal. must be affordable for all our student okay okay so there is a another question uh, omkar so qualifying gate examination was your target that was your goal and now you have qualified the exam while performing that or while preparing for that goal or while uh, putting in lot of hard work and efforts into that goal um, like did you start planning from third year or it was just before three months or six months of the exam you decided that no i want to take the gate examination or what is your recommendation for the students when they should you know start planning whether now the gate examination can be also given by third year student so do you recommend to give exam uh, by third year student in third year itself or it is good or wiser to give it in the final year what is your suggestion so many of many a times me being a students and understanding from peers we actually have a confusion on whether one going abroad or studying in india itself so that is what also delayed my decision for getting into gate so right around july august is where i decided no i do not want to study uh, further abroad but continue my higher studies in india itself so in around september october is when i i decided to start for my gate prep and yes as you mentioned third year definitely should attempt even if though they have not covered the entire portion just an attempt to the uh, to the examination center getting into those time constraints is what they will uh, they will have as an expectation what to expect in the final year so they have a one year span which wherein where they can prepare for the same so they have a better idea as compared to others giving that exam so yes i do feel that okay so you omkar you said um, that you would like to pursue your master uh, here in india itself and you do not want to go abroad because i i know that there are many student uh, who has an aspiration and it is a very very a uh, personal decision it is a very very personal career goal um, that one should keep it in mind so what is your career goal for you know further future would you like to you know go for the industry or would you like to go for academics or what is your you know career goal just to you know um, inspire our students because generally it is said that mtech and then one also goes for 
PhD and then further. So, what is that career path? I think one thing that has always inspired me is the teams that actually bring about different products into the market. So, definitely, that re requires a huge amount of research behind it. So that's where that's the line where I I wish to pursue, going into tech, going into research, and then going into a stream where I can actually bring in different products into the market that are going to solve the need uh, of the earth. Okay, thank you so much, Omkar, uh, being here today. It's so inspiring attending your uh, you know session. Uh, feel like I'm sure those who are listening this talk uh, will get highly motivated, inspired, and they will um, take this GATE examination and following your tips, strategies, and tricks. Of course, they have to walk on the path. You are just showing the path that, okay, friends, this is the path. If you walk, you will pass the GATE exam, but ultimately taking one, one step, the student will have to walk. They will have to study. They will have to work hard. They will have to rem memorize. They will have to clear the concepts. So all is their path. They will walk. You are only guiding them. You are only showing them um, that path. So while preparing your GATE examination, you must have visualized like, you know, oh, what if I qualify the GATE exam? It's one of the best thing in the in the world and it brings so much of happiness. Um, and today I can see, you know, the happiness on your face and your parents also, you made them so proud. You also made all the faculty proud that you have qualified so a burden, not burden, but a responsibility is there on parents, a responsibility is there on institution, also on the faculties, you know, and also on an individual that what would happen in my career. Now, since you have qualified the gate, now your um, that responsibility on everyone's head is a little bit eased out because we know that you will get easily admitted in some of the good institution and you will pursue your higher education. So friends, Students, those who are watching, GATE examination is one of the door to enter into career path, which is bright, which will lead to a bright future. You will go for a higher education and we already know that higher education is very helpful, even in the industries, if it is a food industry, if it is R&D, always higher education is, um, you know, it gives an added edge to your promotions and many other things. So thank you so much, Omkar, being here today, sharing all your tips. It's been wonderful talking to you and my very best wishes for your bright future. Please feel free to contact for any further help or um, assistance you need for any possible things. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.